What's up guys? Look, it's a brand new video finally after two weeks. And this is an important video because as the title says, I was hacked and it's been a couple of crazy weeks recovering from this. The channel was converted into a cryptocurrency bot scam channel. And if you were privileged enough to see it, the channel was rebranded as some Ripple cryptocurrency scam live stream that was streaming out to 50,000 bots. And I guess the way that it works is that if there's enough bots watching it, YouTube's gonna go, ooh, this video is important. And they push it all to the front of your feeds. So a lot of you guys unsubscribed because you had no idea that it wasn't me. And I think it's kind of the scammer's goal because my channel's verified so it looks trustworthy. And they had some kind of link in the description under the video. I hope none of you guys clicked it because who knows where that would have took you. But let's rewind a bit in case you're wondering how this all happened. I also want to run through the steps so that you can prevent yourself from going through the exact same thing that I had to go through. And unfortunately, I learned the hard way, but you know, I'll timestamp this video if you just want to learn how to protect and secure your YouTube channel and your identity if you don't care what happened to me. So there's a lot of email scams going around right now. I'm sure lots of you have seen them. Most of them are obviously so fake that you would never even entertain the idea of opening. Like the lost cousin in Africa has left you $2 million and they need your bank information to wire you the money or other people offering you $80,000 for your YouTube channel. Yeah, the dollar sign was after the 80,000. Clearly fake. There's been a big string of YouTube brand sponsored integration scans that have been catching a bunch of YouTubers off guard. Unfortunately, I was one of them. And I'm pretty aware of scams and things like this, but nothing about my interaction with the scammer felt off. The big clue was the email that I should have probably triple double checked, but I didn't because it looked kind of legit but it came from Gmail. And most companies will not email you from Gmail, they'll email you from their domain. Especially a company of this size, it was not a small brand. But the problem is I've actually dealt with smaller brands that are legit, that do use Gmail. So I don't know, I guess it was my bad, it was just bad judgment on my part. So this is kind of basically what went down. I'm trying to be kind of transparent here. They pitched their company's name, uh, that they wanted to work with me and that they wanted to do a sponsored integration and ask my rate. I gave them my number for my rate and they agreed on it. So they kind of continued on. We can give you a license key for the software, but since I already use the software, I said I didn't need one, but it would be really cool if I could get like a percentage code off for my subscribers once I do the integration. They agreed on that. Nothing seemed weird. Uh, they responded a couple days later and they said that they wanted to try and get the integration out by this date. So I agreed on that time. And then they told me to go over the marketing material and talking points which is not weird. It's pretty typical for that. And I downloaded that and that's my mistake. Either that link hacked me or the file I downloaded, which was a fake MP4 file, which I clicked on because I thought it was a video and nothing happened. And I was kind of in the middle of something at the time. So I just deleted the file and figured I'd try it out later. And that was my huge mistake because it was either that link or that file was the hack backdoor to my browser. Anyway, two days later, I'm driving home from a shoot. I get three notifications back to back, just like boom, boom, boom. Two-factor authentication turned off, recovery email changed, recovery number changed, password changed, and then I was just logged out of everything. And I'm driving and I'm like, what? What just happened? So I cranked my car off the first exit and I tried to sign back in. And that's when I noticed that the recovery number was changed and wasn't my own. Uh, and I'll pop up the security log so you can actually see what they did. They bounced around all over the place when they finally got in. So I instantly started changing all my crucial passwords that I could from my car in the parking lot for like an hour. Uh, I wasn't even thinking about my YouTube channel at the time because I was just worried about my business email being hacked and all the things that are linked to it. Unfortunately, my YouTube was also linked to it. I also didn't know who to contact because it's not like Google just puts a display phone number that you can call them for support. Um, so in that moment, I realized I had also hijacked my YouTube channel. So I reached out to YouTube through Twitter and I wanna thank all the amazing friends and people on Twitter in this community because like hundreds of you guys started blasting them with messages until they finally DM'd me about 15 minutes later. Long story short, YouTube support was on the case. They shut it down. Unfortunately, they live streamed on my channel for like 10 hours. I lost about a thousand subscribers and I don't blame the people that unsubscribe. You had no idea it wasn't me. Anyway, they recovered my channel and restored all the content, but it took like a week and a half and I have no idea how this affects my AdSense or if I'll even get a payment this month. But, you know, there's also a huge strike on my channel at the time and that has since been removed. I'm just grateful for YouTube support, even though it was kind of slow communication, at least it was taken care of. 
I also have no idea to what extent on things they got from me from hacking my email. I just have to assume that they got everything on me. I put fraud alerts on everything, canceled credit cards, canceled bank accounts, froze everything, made new ones, spent two days changing like 300 passwords. Um, basically, someone told me they probably cloned my browser and spoofed my IP address, and that's how they're able to get into the back of everything I have without triggering two-factor authentication. So this is where I want to talk about security and securing yourself from this happening to you because I've learned a lot in the last couple of days. And I'll be honest, I just assumed that two-factor authentication had my back and I didn't really take security that serious. I think a lot of this is just because of convenience and Chrome handling all my logins and things like that. But now everything's like mega locked down. So the first thing is pretty obvious. Most people know is it's having a crazy good password and I'd suggest getting a password manager. There's lots out there like LastPass or 1Password. Basically just encrypt and manage all your logins and passwords so that you only have to remember one password and that's just your master password. Um, 1Password has a free trial if you wanna try it out. I'll put a link in the description. You can check that out and set it up for yourself. The next thing is making sure you have two-factor authentication um, pretty much on any site that'll allow you to have it. I had SMS two-factor authentication on my emails um, or just send you a text with a login code. But since my browser auto logs me in when I'm on this IP address, it never triggered anything when the hacker was able to do the same. So I'd strongly recommend you remove your phone number from two-factor authentication on anything you can and just use something like Google Authenticator or Authy. Basically, they're apps that will just be on your device only that has like a rolling code every 30 seconds. And once you've logged in with the correct password, it's gonna ask for that authenticator code and it's way more secure because it's only on your device, like your iPhone, your iPad. Instead of sending you a text in the awful event, your number also gets hijacked by a SIM swap. But that said, having any form of two-factor authentication is better than not having anything at all, especially if the site will offer it. Another recommendation I would say is getting a Google Voice number or a VoIP number so that you can add that to accounts so it's not your own personal number and it keeps it way more private and out of the hands of hackers. But you can even go a step further like I did and get a Titan key this is a hardware encryption, two-factor authentication that basically talks with your login and it's assigned to your accounts. And when you type in your password, it'll ask you for the hardware key. I have a USB one as well as a Bluetooth one for mobile devices. Basically, if you don't have this on you or plugged in, you can't access your account at all. It makes it way more secure and it relies on like a physical hardware device to unlock your account. I honestly don't trust browsers to autofill or save my passwords anymore. So I have Chrome set up to remove cookies and history Every single time I close it, I also have autofill and auto save everything turned off. It kind of seems drastic and inconvenient, but so is potentially having this happen again. So these are the steps that I've taken to secure myself. Probably none of this stuff would have happened if I had this set up. Well, if I never had downloaded the file, probably this never would have happened either. The next thing you should consider if you haven't already is using a separate email address that's not connected to anything. So that's the email that's going to go on the about me section or the contact me section on YouTube that goes on your channel. And this is the email that brands are actually gonna contact you through to actually approach you about brand deals. So this email has no value. It's not connected to anything. It's not connected to the channel. It's just completely separate just for dealing with that. And the last thing is to use a VPN anytime you can. This is gonna protect you from hackers. I've been using NordVPN for a really long time, but unfortunately, I didn't have it turned on at this time when I downloaded this file and it might've saved my butt from being hacked because then the hacker wouldn't have had my actual IP address and my location. And it probably would have triggered two-factor authentication if I had used an actual VPN. I realize a bunch of you guys are gonna be judging me and rolling your eyes at how stupid I am and such an easy target. But you know, like I said, as I assumed, Chrome kept my stuff safe and two-factor authentication had my back. But now I realize that I just had everything set up for convenience and it really wasn't for security but now I'm like super locked down. I trust no one moving forward. So hopefully if you make some of those changes and lock down your account, make it way more secure, you won't have to deal with the same thing that I had to deal with. But I guess the biggest takeaway from this is that if you're approached by a brand or a company to do an integration that you haven't dealt with before, make sure to double check, triple check, quadruple check who's sending this file do some research on the person, make sure they're legit. Also, don't download any files that look iffy. I'm not clicking anything in an email anymore. If it says click here, even if it's from a real brand, I'm not gonna do it. Unfortunately, I believe the person was who they said they were because they used the same name and profile image. 
Um, they were pretending to be the person in charge of a marketing company who actually is that person, but I'm not going to share the name just to cover their identity. Um, they're aware of the situation and so is Google now. Um, I don't typically make these kind of videos, but you know, you kind of live and learn and then you teach by example. And I have links to NordVPN as well as 1Password in the description. And as I mentioned, I don't know how this is going to affect AdSense this month because there was like a solid week of no public content and the monetization was turned off while I worked on the channel. And I'm not sure if AdSense will even come through. But either way, I'm just happy to get everything back. I'm happy I can upload again. But I really do suggest you getting a VPN, using two-factor authentication, using 1Password to manage your passwords. And yeah, just be smart, stay safe. Don't want this to happen to you because it shaved off 10 years off my life. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. I don't know why I said it that way. See you later.